it's a bit chilly this morning welcome back to the channel i'm jim this is astro Picks, and i've got something new to show you so without further ado let's get into it hi and welcome back to the channel good to see you back and for those of you who are new here and you like telescopes and mounts and stars hit that subscribe button I'm fast approaching a thousand subscribers and I'd love to get there by January so if you could do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe I'd really appreciate it so I've got something new to show you I've brought a new mount they are Ioptron Hem 44 it's a hybrid harmonic so the harmonic is in the RA and it's a, tr a traditional worm gear deck. Um, I've been using it for a couple of nights now and I have to say the guiding on it is absolutely flawless. It outperforms my full harmonic Dewey mount that I've got. Um, so I've been really pleased with it so far. And like my other mounts, I've got it mounted on a carbon fibre tripod so it's really nice and light. The head itself is about just under six kilograms. Um, so all in all with the with the mount head and the tripod is around I'd say about seven kilograms so it's really lightweight and easy for me to carry up and down these stairs here. So tonight I'm going to be imaging um, up in Cassiopeia I'm going to be imaging the Ghost Nebula and I'm going to be doing that with my trusty Altair 70 EDQ and also my Altair 26M with I'm going to be doing HA 03 and RGB all again out there premium uh, color filters two inch and the two inch three nanometer um, narrowband filters all in this seven seven filter wheel uh, here so what we'll do is we'll go inside now have a look on Stellarium and see how it all frames up so here we are in Stellarium let's have a look and see what the framing will look like for the ghost the surrounding um, clusters that I'm, I'm looking for. So it's located in Navi. Let's just slip to there to Cassiopeia. So there is the the ghost of Cassiopeia. There, very faint, as everyone knows, or you might not know, but yes, are extremely faint. H, A and O3, so that's hydrogen and oxygen. Um, I'm going to have to really put some long integration time in on that to bring out any, any detail. And what I want to try and do is frame it so I get Navi up here with the ghost. There's an asterism around here that I'd like to also get, and obviously we've got the sailboat cluster here. So that's the framing how I'd like it to be. Be a little bit different, be a little wide, so the ghost won't be that big uh, in the frame. But I just think it just set it off nice with a nice star field, with a little bit of interest down down the bottom here. So let's get into Nina and have a look what that will look like in the framing assistant. Okay, here we are in Nina. I'm going to go to the framing assistant. I'm just going to pull across those coordinates from Stellarium, so that's populated it there. Got the correct focal length for the correct camera parameters set. Let's just wait for that to cross. Excellent. So as you can see there, it's pulled across the framing from um, Stellarium. So we've got the sailboat cluster all set in here. I've got the ghost and navi set there. What I'm going to do now is add this to. I need to open the sequencer. Just put in my sequencer. That's it. And I add update existing. So we got a, it's going to be nice and high as you can see here throughout the night and that time that's transitioning so that is going across the meridian at about 10 to 7 so that's nice and early keep an eye on that one 
because I'm yet to do a Meridian flip uh, with my new telescope. So, yeah, well, not new telescope, sorry, new mount. So interesting to see how that goes. So what I'm going to do is run the autofocus, do a solve and sync, and then just check that the mount is zeroed. I'm going to get it to slew, and then I'm going to get the rotation just to make sure that the camera's correctly rotated uh, for the, what I want as an image. Then it guiding my start, and then uh, that will start transferring data over to my hard drive. Got the Meridian Flip programmed in. Um, it's going to do an autofocus after a filter change, any temperature change, or if the um, size of the star goes above 7% of what it was, uh, the HFR, when we did the autofocus. But tonight, um, I'm just going to get it to run two hours of HA, two hours of oxygen, and get some RGB for the stars. Um, I'm going to probably do around four to six hours of hydrogen and oxygen um, in total. So this will be one night of many. I think it's due to be clear for quite a good good spell tonight. So I'll probably increase that up to do about, actually, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to get that to do three hours of each. I haven't got work tomorrow, so I can stay up a bit later. Um, and then get it to do the RGB and a bit of luminance. Then at the end of the session, it do, does a message box because I've in in the past I've um, I've I don't know I've I've been sitting in the lounge probably playing Call of Duty or watching a film and um, I've forgot I've kind of lost track of time and the and the program stopped and I've gone outside and it's all parked up uh, so now I've got it to kind of ask me are you, are you sure you're finished because I can always go back and just get it to reloop around um, reloop around those uh, do some more hydrogen etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's all set. I'm going to save that. So I'm going to now uh, just wait for it to go dark and we can start this program. I just thought I'd give you a bit more information on the mount that I'm using. So as I said in the intro, it's a HEM44. It's a hybrid mount. It slews at six degrees a second. So the slew speed is, is quite, quite quick where the uh, Zhui that I've got is about two and a half seconds. Uh, two and a half degrees per second sorry so significantly quicker than that it's got a, a usb and a power outage in the deck saddle so handy if you do need to do some cable management but i use this uh, sv bonnie 241 and i'm powering everything through that um something a little bit quirky with this mount and i found a little bit um not a frustration but just a bit quirky is you have to use the handset to control the mount so you have to have your usb through the handset there is Wi-Fi built into that as well, if you didn't want to do that. But on the SEM40 that I had before, you could literally USB straight into the head mount itself. So um, that was, I thought, I'd, yeah, I'd have preferred it to be like that, but unfortunately you can't, you have to go through the handset. The carbon fiber tripod didn't come with any sort of uh, accessory bag like you do on the, on the on the ZWO one so I've had to go onto Amazon and buy something just to keep all the cable cables neat and tidy under the mount and obviously adds a little bit of stability if you did want to put like a, a some people put weights in them just to make sure you've got a stable foundation but I found I haven't had to do that yet the mount itself guides really well so I've used it um, a few times now and um, I'm finishing off a little bit my elephant trunk and I'll show you the guiding uh, from that and then I'm going to be slewing over to Cassiopeia to do to the, to the image we talked about but uh, the guiding typically sits between 0.5 and 0.7 um, arc seconds so that's I found that that's really that, you know really good guiding and probably the best I've had with any mount that I've owned so really been pleased with this so far you can put up to 20 20 kilograms without a uh, counterweight 25 kilograms with a counterweight so this will hold my Newtonian no issues whatsoever so looking forward to using this tonight um, it's clear I'm gonna get a good good spell on it and hopefully have a nice image to show you at the end of it anyway it's quite chilly out here so I'm going back inside and having a nice coffee and then let's just wait for this to go dark <laughs> 